Hi, we're going to talk a little bit more about regular expressions, and in particular, a subfunction of regular expressions called capturing groups. So sometimes you wish to capture a part of an expression. For example, if a user is uh, using a chatbot, they might type something like, my name is Jane. And you might want to respond with something like, hello, Jane. In order to do this, you need to do two things. First, to identify that the person is giving you their name by identifying that a string is something like my name is Jane or I am called Jane, and then to extract the name from the string so that you can put it in your response string and have hello, Jane. Capture and groups help us with this. So in regular expressions, the parenthesis can help us capture any subpart of the regular expression. For example, here we have the pattern hello, comma, and then within the parenthesis, a dot and a plus sign. This means that you will identify the pattern hello, comma, space, and then also uh, any character, which is the dot, one or more times, that's the plus sign, and then you will capture the dot plus. So in this case, any character once or more you will set up Jane so that it can be extracted and you can access it through, for example, Python. For example, if we have the string hello Jane, you can uh, use the regular expression hello comma any character once or more. The computer will find the match hello Jane and then it will extract the, as a group one just the characters Jane. Notice that this is the group one because it's the first one from left to right. Hello, Jane. You can have more than one capturing group in an expression. For example, hello, first capturing group and second capturing group will identify the literal hello comma, then any number of characters once or more, space and space, and then any number of characters once or more and we'll put it in two separate capturing groups. So for example, if you have the following regular expression, hello, first capturing group, second capturing group, and you have a string like hello, Jane and Jan, the computer will find the whole string and then uh, capture Jane within group one and Jan within group two. Notice that, one, that the first one is group one because it's the first one from left to right, and then this is the second one from left to right. You give it a try. Try to capture someone's name from the string below. As we did before, pause the video and then we'll show the solution. Pause and rerun. So for example, we have these strings. Hello, John and Alberto and my name Rolando. Please re replace it with your own name. We can capture the hello comma space, and then for example, capture any character, but just once. So that's, that will capture just the first letter. If we tell it to capture all the characters zero or once, or maybe one or more times, it'll correctly capture all of the sentences. So it'll correctly match the sentences. And then when we have the capturing group, it'll identify the sentence, hello John, for example, and extract the first group, John. So in the first match, hello John, the first group is John. In this match, hello Anne, the first group extracts Anne. In the third match, hello Alberto, the, uh, the regular expression extracts the group number one, Alberto. Now you give it a try again. This is the more complex uh, expression that we had in the last video. So you need to account for the fact that the comma is there sometimes, sometimes it's not. Sometimes the greeting is hello or hi. How are you going to capture the name? Pause and unpause. Let's build the expression. So sometimes it's hello and sometimes it's hi. We're gonna put that in parentheses so that we, the computer knows that it's all the characters in hello or all the characters in hi. A literal comma and a space. The comma can happen zero or one times. Then all of 
the uh, rest of the letters once or more. So this expression has either hello or hi in the first capturing group, as you can see here, the comma happening zero or one times, a space happening once, and then any character once or more being captured. So John is in the second capturing group here. Anne is in the second capturing group here. And you just need to call it up in Python accordingly. The first capturing group is going to be hello. The second one, Anne. There's other controls. So for example, you can use the caret for negative. Uh, this, uh, for example, in the first pattern, when you have everything from A to Z, uppercase A to Z, lowercase, and then you negate it, it means that it will match anything that is not a letter, that is not between A and Z. So for example, in not a match, it would match the spaces and the dot. As you can see here, anything that is not in A to Z or A to Z is the space between the words and the dot, the period at the end of the word. You can ask the computer to, for example, find everything that is not a space, as in the second pattern, once or more. And this is just going to return to you the words and any other characters, like the period at the end of sentences. So for example, in just a bunch of words, the first match is just because it is everything that is not a space, once or more. Likewise with of, everything that is not a space, once or more. And in words, it includes the period because it's everything that is not a space, once or more. Finally, you can have um, a wildcard like the dollar sign. So for example, if you capture everything that is not a space, once or more, dollar, this means that you're capturing things that touch the end of the string. So this would match only words period because that's the one that it's where the following element is the end of the string. So notice how if I have that expression, which is the one I used before, it matches any group of non-space objects, non-space parts of the string. If I add the dollar sign, it will only capture things that are not a space and that are in direct contact with the end of the string. Some characters are special because of the role in the operating system and in programming. For example, the asterisk is the cleany star, so that's a wildcard. The dot is a wildcard as well, as well. So if we want to tell the computer to find a literal dot or a literal asterisk, we need to escape it with a backslash. So for example, backslash dot will match any literal dot. As you can see here, in the string not a match, period, the regular expression backslash period matches just the period, the literal period. If your pattern, pattern is backslash asterisk, it will match a literal asterisk. For example, in O asterisk K asterisk, this will, this will find two matches, the two asterisks here. Now you give it a try yourself. Let's add one additional twist to the regular expression. It's the same one we've been using, but now it has a dot and we want the expression to recognize the dot, but we don't want to capture it. How would you do this? Let's see. So for example, we're gonna start again with our two kinds of greetings, hello or hi a comma, which can happen zero or one times, a space, which happens one time, then let's add a twist. This will find any character between uppercase A and lowercase z once. Um, you can do this because of the characteristics of the ASCII um, letters. We will talk more about it in week nine, if I remember correctly. So this will find you once any letter between uppercase A and lowercase z. And you want to find that more than once. So notice how this expression finds you the greeting, hello John, and the capturing group, which we only have as hello. 
Now we actually want to capture the name, so we need to wrap this up in a capturing group. Now we have hello John, and the second capturing group has the name John, the name Anne without the dot, Alberto without the dot. Let's say sometimes users write the dot and sometimes they don't. You can capture the dot, uh, I'm sorry, a literal dot. But notice that this would leave hello Anne out because it doesn't have a dot in the end. We would need to ha add a question mark so that it captures zero or one dots after the capturing group. Hello John, hello Anne, for example. There's so many codes in regular expressions. They're an amazing, wondrous type of programming. Uh, these are just a few examples. Backslash D is any digit, ba uh, lowercase. Backslash uppercase D is any non-digit. Backslash S is um, anything that's not a space. Your uh, regular expression tester should have many more codes that you can use. Finally, just as a quick note, if you're using Python, you might need to add the prefix R to your regular expression. This is the way, this is because of the way Python handles the escape characters. As you might have noticed, in all of our tester expressions, we always have the prefix R here. So if you're using capturing groups or other fancier parts of regular expressions, you're going to need the R in front of the expression. Thank you for your time.